Where we're at, where we left off is that we, I, I blew your minds open with this very tiny little idea. <laughs> Namely the, what was the object we talked about last time? The unit circle, right. So, uh, I've drawn better actually, but anyway. Um, <laughs> it's easier to draw big circles than it is to draw small circles. Okay. Agni, are you ready? Yes, I am. Great. We introduced this guy. And we said, look, you can think of trigonometry not just as ratios of sides in a right angle triangle, but as functions of an angle, any angle you like. It doesn't matter whether it can fit in a triangle, let alone a right angle triangle or not. So now this idea of sine theta, cos theta, tan theta means we don't have to think of it, we don't have to draw a picture of a triangle anymore. We can just take different angles, any angles we like, and just see what happens. In fact, when we were having a go, we went from 0 to 90 to angles that don't belong anywhere in a triangle, 180, 270. I didn't bring things back all the way around because this is the wonderful thing about the unit circle, all circles in fact. This spot over here, right? Uh, if there's an angle that goes with that, if there's an angle that goes with that, what would you estimate, just come up with a number, reasonably sort of, according to the scale, what does it look like it would be? Yeah, I think 45 is a great idea. 45. Okay. Now, uh, it sure does look like 45, except 45 is not the only angle it could be. For instance, if I start from, where do I start from again? It's the positive x-axis, right? And I start going around anti-clockwise. I could, sure enough, just go up like that, and there's my 45 degrees. But there's another way. Excuse me. There's another way I can get to that same spot. I could keep going around and do a full extra revolution if I so chose. Okay. Now, if I went all the way around and then did the 45, what would that angle be? 405 degrees. 405 degrees. Now, because I end up on the same spot, I should predict that I get the same value. You have your calculator there, right? If you haven't got it out yet, do that. I picked 45 because it is one of those three values which I introduced last time as a nice value. It plays nicely, excuse me. It plays nicely with our trig functions. It gives us a number that's quite easy to write. Now, I'm gonna teach you a bit of a trick right now. You can remember, and I hope you do get to the point where you remember what this exact value is, but you're probably not there yet. So I want you to go ahead, put sine 45 in your calculator. When you hit equals, what do you get? Zero. Dot, 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 dot. Okay? Now, in time, like I said, your memory will start to you know, assimilate these ideas and you'll know actually what exact value that is without all the decimal rubbish. But at the moment, you don't. So I'm going to teach you this little trick. While this is still in your display, I would like you to hit the answer squared button. Can you do that? Can you square it? Okay, now when you square it, you should get a nice number, right? In fact, if I recall, you should get a half. Is that correct? 0 0.5, okay? Now, what this tells you is, um, pick up your pencil again or pen and go back to your book. What this tells you is that if you square the right-hand side, well, that means you've also squared the left-hand side. Do you agree? This is not sine 45 anymore. This is sine 45 squared, agreed? But this tells you what the exact value is. It's kind of like a sneaky way of getting at it. If you see something like x squared equals 9, what's x? There are two possible values, plus or minus 3. In this case, I can actually eliminate one of those values. Watch. If I take the square root, I'm trying to undo what I just did. I squared. And now I'm doing the square, that's a bad Q, the square root. I go back to sine 45 on the left hand side. But unlike here, when I had to say, oh, it might be this one, it might be that one, it could be plus or minus, you actually know from the first line you wrote down which answer it is. Is it the plus or is it the minus? It has to be the plus because that's what the calculator told you in the first place. So if you take the square root of this guy, the square root of a half, you can also write that as 1 
on the square root of 2. Because the square root of 1 is, after all, 1. Right? So this is an exact value. We learned this last time. Do you remember? We drew the isosceles triangle, and it came out. Okay. So I was suggesting that if we have a go at another angle that's closely related to this, 405 degrees, if we go all the way, uh, which way am I rotating? Um, this way, this way around, then go ahead, punch it into your calculator, sine 405, because it is 360 degrees later, you should find it's equal to 0.707, da 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 da, right? Now, on that basis, you should be able to predict to me a couple of other angles, in fact, an infinite number of angles, that will all be equal to the same thing. Can you give me another example, any angle you like, that should give you the same thing? Any takers? OK, if you add 360, again, that's, I'm not going to draw it because it'll look ridiculous. But if I go around another 360, I should land on the same spot. And every time I go 360, so I guess, uh, what did we just say? 765, all the same. Okay. Now, that's all cool, that's great. I'm going to come back to this idea of how, how far you can keep on going with sine in a second. But there's one more point that I'm a bit more interested in. I need another color. And if you've got another color there, you should use it too. OK. We said sine cos 10. They're not about ratios anymore. We defined them in new ways as coordinates. Sine theta, which coordinate is it of this point? It's the y coordinate. What about cos? It's the x coordinate. And 10 is not either of the coordinates. It's actually, yeah, it's y on x, which is sine over cos. OK, now I want you to look carefully at the diagram. If sine theta really is the y coordinate, then you can see there's another spot on the circle which has the same y coordinate as up here. It's got the same sign as that point up there. Hmm. Figure out this for a second. The y coordinate is 1 on root 2. Uh, that's what your calculator helped us work out. Okay. So therefore, this coordinate is something, that's the x coordinate, and 1 on root 2. That's the y coordinate. That's sine. Look, the other spot on the circle, which has the same y coordinate, is the same up and down position, right? Can you see where it is? Do you see where it's hiding? Isn't it over here? <laughs> Think about it. Think about what y coordinates mean. Y coordinates mean how far up and down you are, OK? Well, if this guy is 1 on root 2 that high, then isn't, that, isn't there going to be a spot on the opposite side of the circle where it has to be? Because circles are always symmetrical, right? In fact, they're symmetrical every possible way. OK, now think. If it's literally on the other side, engage your brain. Uh, new color, sorry. What is this angle going to be? Hmm. Ah, OK. So if it really is a reflection, right? If it really is a reflection, see how this is 45 on this side? Well, it should be 45 on this side as well. Wouldn't you agree? Those are both supposed to be 45. I just flipped it across, yeah? You see? You see? So therefore, all the way across is 180, but I didn't go that far. I only went to whoop, this far, right? So I'm short by 45 degrees. So this angle in here is 180 take away 45 degrees. Last I checked, that was 135. Go reach for your calculator. Sine of 135. And lo and behold, it's the same. You don't need your calculator to confirm this stuff for you. You can see what's going on. OK, now what I want us to do is to put this all together. Can you draw for me? a set of axes, but in a little bit of an unusual way. Um, we're only going to draw the right-hand side of this set of axes, and it's going to be really, really long. Okay? 